In this video, we're going to be looking to model our next uh, practice joint, and that is our rebate joint. Uh, you can see an example of what it will end up looking like uh, without the measurements, but the measurements are here just to help us know what we're going to create. The joint itself, of course, is this area here. Um, if we just quickly take away uh, this section here, we'll get a better view of what the joint itself looks like. So here we can see the idea is that we're taking out a rebate, hence the name, a section of the joint uh, to allow the sort of table or, or slot area where our other piece is going to fit in. The measurements we're going to be using for this, we'll start with uh, simulating a piece that is 70 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters long and 12 millimeters thick. And we'll be taking out the rebate. Now the rebate, will be 12 millimeters wide uh, because the piece of wood that goes into it that we just took away a moment ago is 12 millimeters thick. And we always go halfway down. So because this is a 12 millimeter thick piece of wood that we're simulating, we will be going six millimeters down. So we're gonna be going through how to draw this piece. The, the second piece, the part that we just hid, that's just a, a straight draw piece, nothing special about that. But we'll start by just creating this piece and putting the rebate out of it. So we'll start again just by creating a new project. Okay, now that we've got our new project, we'll start by getting rid of our little representative person here, just erase them. And we're going to begin simply by drawing the uh, piece of wood as if it was the, the part we just cut. So as in previous examples, we're just going to draw a rectangle, any size to begin with, just getting one long and one short. And as we remember from the uh, previous diagram, it's going to be 100 millimeters long and 70 millimeters wide. So I'm just typing those measurements into my dimensions box down the bottom. And of course it looks quite small. So I'm now going to use my zoom to extents just to get straight in. Using my mouse wheel, I'm rotating and zooming out just to get a bit of a better angle. And I'm going to use my push pull tool just to bring that up type into my 12 millimeters to the distance down the bottom and the right there, press and enter, and I now have my piece of wood. Now we're going to create our rebate on this end here. I'm going to do it in two ways. The first way I'm going to do is very much like I would do if uh, I'm doing this in real life on the real piece of wood, just to get the idea. And then I'm going to show you how much more quickly we can do this uh, in SketchUp without having to go through all those stages. So the first thing I'll do is I would measure a distance from the edge of the wood that is 12 millimeters in and get a line going across. This will represent the, the width that we need for the other piece that's gonna slot into it. Remembering we're measuring 12 millimeters because the wood we're using is 12 millimeters thick. It's gonna stand up through this gap. So if I'm doing this with the real wood, I'll be measuring, marking, and using a square to get a line across. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use my tape measure tool to get a 12 millimeter line. So again, I can just do any amount, it doesn't matter how big or small I go. If I'm going to type my measurement into the length down in the bottom right there, press enter, and I've got that 12 millimeter line. So this is like marking and drawing my line with a square all in one. I'm going to use my pencil to turn that construction line by clicking and joining the two intersections on the line there to an actual solid line, and I can now rub out the rest of my construction line. So I've got a mark that is now 12 millimeters uh, from the end. The next thing I need to do is to measure halfway down. So again, I would probably be measuring down six millimeters, down six millimeters, using a rule or something similar to join them up. In a similar way, I'm going to use my tape measure again to get a construction line going down, making sure I stay on that blue there six millimeters, typing it in. I'm going to rotate around, do the same going down here. And finally rotating all the way around, do the same on the opposite side. So we can see I've got these lines going all the way around. I also need to go 12 millimeters back to, to match up with this line here. So there's a few ways I could do that. I could measure another line going back this way and go 12 millimeters like that one, or to do it another way on the other side, 
I could take advantage of the fact that it wants to create this straight line going down and just draw it in. So I could go from the point where that line on the top is actually coming in and making sure I stay on the straight line, I could come straight down. Either way, I'm going to end up tracing each of these construction lines that I've created. Again, very much like I would be doing if I was doing this with rulers, squares, uh, pencils and so forth on the real wood. But I'm essentially getting all those lines in there. And finally, of course, I'm now going to rub out all these extra construction lines that I don't actually need. There we are. So I have now this piece measured in. It's 12 millimeters from the end. It's six millimeters down and all the way around. And essentially, I'll now be cutting and then chiseling out this part here. Uh, in the simulation, of course, we're going to use our push-pull tool and go down six millimeters to that line. And we now have our rebate. Okay, we can spin around and see it there. I'm now going to show you obviously how much more quickly we could actually do this and why uh, we would actually do something like this in a SketchUp or a similar program because uh, obviously it's a lot quicker than everything we just did. So if you follow along and you've done it that way, you don't have to delete and, and start again, but I just want to, to demonstrate how much more quickly we can do things. So I'm going to very quickly just remove or undo everything I've just done. right back to the start here. Okay, so now, if I wanted to do this much more quickly, I can do it in, again, a few ways, but I'll show you one quick way. I still like the idea of using my tape measure uh, to get my first measurement 12 millimeters back. I like that idea. I still like to use then the, the pencil to join that. You do have to have a solid line and remove that. So we're back to sort of where we started from. But we can now see that this surface, this top surface, has a separate rectangle. So here is one rectangle, and of course there's the second rectangle. So we don't actually have to do all these lines and, and construction lines around the sides. We literally can take our push-pull tool here, grab this section, and pull it down. And of course we know it goes halfway, so we just type in the six, and we've just done that exact same step. So within two or three actions, we've been able to solve and, and replicate exactly the same process as we had to do with several more lines and a whole lot more measuring and, and organization. So there's one of the benefits of using a SketchUp or a 3D modeling tool. Uh, you can do something a lot more quickly than you would in real life. Now that we've got that, uh, just the last little thing to, to try and put it all together, we're quickly gonna group this Again, grouping it so that we can move it and do things with it separately. And again, I just need to now show the other piece that's going to come out from here. Now, again, I could draw a whole separate piece and drag it over and position and lock it together. But let's do things a little bit more uh, quickly and a bit more smart way. Uh, we're going to just take our rectangle tool and I can draw over the top. So from this corner here to that corner here. I don't have to measure now because I'm taking advantage of the fact that I know this rebate is the size I want. So if I draw that in, I've essentially drawn a rectangle right over the rebated area. Because we grouped it before, that's okay. It's not actually the same. It's separate, it's floating on top of the group I made before. So we have this separate rectangle and I can take my push-pull tool and take that rectangle and pull it up. And again, I don't have to know the measurement. I just type it in 100. And up it goes. Let's just zoom out a little bit to see it. And there we have our piece. Now, we do have one small issue. At the moment, this bottom section where we did our rebate is in fact a group, and we can easily select that, and we can see it's a group. But this part is actually still made up of lots and lots of surfaces. So we really want to group this as well to, to keep it as a separate piece. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can try and select all the pieces, it could get fiddly, um, but we can take advantage of a little thing in SketchUp that if we try and select over this, it's selected everything here, but you notice it hasn't selected the original group because that works because I didn't select everything that was in this group. If I was to do this, 
I would select this group as well as all these pieces. But because I just went over it a little bit, I'm not selecting everything in the group. So it basically says that, that group's not included and it just has grabbed this stuff. So I'm able to right click and group that now and it's not affecting the original group with the rebate. And just to show that one more time, I guess what I can do is I can grab my move tool and I can grab one of these pieces and just move it away. And you can see that I have two separate pieces, one with the rebate in it and one with the original. If I did do the longer way and I was making two separate pieces, again, I could maybe grab this piece here by its corner and bring it over and lock it in place very much like I did before. So there we have uh, one of probably dozens of ways that I could draw a rebate joint. Um, and you should now be able to create your own simulated model of the practice joint ready to then do that in class.